Hi everyone, this is Jane here and I have a great big admission to make to you all right now. I have just made the most monumental mistake. Now we all make them, we're only human and I'm as human as anybody else going forward. And I've just done a live video and I think I did a really cool live video and that live video I did uh, into a group that I run, a huge group, a global group all around the world and I did it into that group and it should have been into this uh, onto my business page. So I really apologize to all those that have seen some of this already but for those of you watching live right now then um, it's absolutely fantastic to have you with us and uh, I'm going to be sharing some thoughts and ideas with you, bringing this community together and just kind of chewing the fat if you like. So here we are, we are in day 12 of lockdown and um, it's been a interesting, uh, it's good to have some of you back onto this one that maybe have already been onto my live video of about an hour ago. If you joined me about an hour ago in the group and I've already heard some of this, give me a thumbs up, give me some smiles, give me some emojis just to let me know that <coughs> that I'm only human just like you all are. Anyway, um, I want to just uh, share some sort of best practice with you. Listen, it was absolutely amazing uh, when I did my last live video. I was literally bowled over, overwhelmed by how many of you joined me from all around the world. You know, we had people come join me from over 30 countries, absolutely phenomenal. So whatever you're watching from right now, just pop in the chat box where you're watching from and uh, that will just um, be phenomenal because there's nothing like having a global audience. And also going forward to maybe have each and every well, have you uh, pop some questions in the chat box so I can answer those questions for you. You know, it doesn't matter where you are around the world, it doesn't matter what question you ask, that question could be really relevant to all the watchers and listeners. So I just also want to say a heartfelt thank you for all the beautiful messages. I mean, some incredible messages came in around the world. We've answered a lot of them within the chat boxes. Some of them you sent personally. I will get back to each and every one of you um, personally just to respond to your, your messages. And uh, they were just lovely. It was heartfelt. And as I said to you last time I went live, the purpose of doing these um, these live events is to bring us together as a community. You know, we're living through these very troubled times. Uh, sometimes we can feel very, we're in isolation, but we can feel very isolated, even though we've got uh, every platform known to man at the moment where we can connect and engage with people, it can still feel quite lonely. And to know there's somebody or a group of us coming together and just kind of hanging out together, I think can put a smile on our faces. And uh, we can even make you laugh at times because I just owned up to a monumental mistake tonight. You're all going to laugh at that and say, Jane, how could you do that? You're a diamond manager. Well, I'm human. Hi, Ashford from Norway. Good to have you with us. We've got Louis from Ghana. We've got India. We've got Sweden. We've got Poland. We've got South Wales. We've got the Netherlands, Ireland. Brilliant. So I wanted to share two or three things with you today um, that I think will help you and make a bit of a difference. But before I do that, I just thought I would share with you things that I found unexpectedly hard over the last few days. And I guess if I'm finding it hard, then I think you're probably going to be finding it hard as well. And sometimes when we find things hard, we think we're the only ones and we can be a bit tough on ourselves. You know, I just had a, a chat with one of my team members and um, we have a three day follow up call just so I can hold her accountable in the nicest possible way. Um, as to her productivity in her business and um, you know some of the things that we shared I said to her you know we all go through that we all feel those things we're all human we all feel the same excitement disappointment joy uh, fear anxieties we all feel it we're, we are the same we are the same no matter where we are so things that I found really really hard over the last few days First one is not being able to hug my babies, my little grandchildren. They're 18 months and four and a half. 
and just to not be able to feel their little arms around my neck. Yeah, you know, kids even have that special smell, don't they? You know, to just have them nuzzling into me, I found that really, really, really hard. Um, Harrison's decided that he's going to put together a cuddle book. And the cuddle book is the amount of cuddles that we owe each other. And at the moment, he reckons it's a trillion and three cuddles that I owe him. And I promise you that when we come out of all of this, it will be far, far more than that. It's tough, isn't it, when we can't show affection. I'm a very affectionate person. I'm what they call a kino. Um, and a kino person is someone that likes affection. I like to have a hug. I like to be close to people. And it's been hard not being able to hug my family, not being able to hug my dad, who's struggling at the moment. And I know he needs a hug. And I can't go near to him uh, just in case, you know, anything happens. So, yes, sometimes we even need a bit of virtual hug, guys. So keep the emojis coming. Keep the love flowing. Things I value. Now, I always value people that help me and support me. Always. I've always done that. But I think I've realized today, more so than ever, I will be honest with you because I said I was going to be honest, today I miss more so than ever our cleaning ladies, our ironing ladies, our gardeners and our whole support team. You know, I live in a beautiful big old barn conversion with a big extension and I suddenly realized today the enormity of having to do some cleaning alongside running the business, alongside looking after dad, alongside all the other stuff. And it was just like, oh my God, where do I start? And I suddenly realized, you know what, it doesn't matter if there's a bit of dust, a bit of dust on the sideboard, or there's a bit of washing up in the sink, or there's some washing to go out on the line. The most important thing is to stay connected to the business. Hi, Victor from Hungary. I'm in the right platform right now going live. So I realized that, you know, I have huge gratitude for the people that support me in being able to be a strong leader, build a strong business, and to be able to be there for each and every one of you if you need me in any way, shape, or form. So I'm really missing my support, guys, at the moment. I'm kind of missing not being able to pop to the shops and pick up something when I need it. You know, I never thought in my lifetime that I would struggle to get food into our house. You see, I can't go and queue up in the lines to go to the supermarket because dad's a high risk and uh, I can't risk bringing something back into the house. All of the delivery slots are taken. You know, there's no one that wants to deliver anything. So that's, that's been difficult. And, uh, you know, I've had to be quite industrious in the way that I've sourced people to help with putting together boxes of fresh produce, uh, daily stuff like eggs and milk and butter and what have you. That's been interesting. I never thought that we would see that in our lifetime. Um, and for any of you that are struggling with that right now, think outside the box. There are always people that will help, people that we never even knew existed before that will help with deliveries. It's not all about the big supermarkets. Support the local chains, support the local people. You know, I've really missed not being able to pop out for a coffee or a glass of wine or a meal with friends, and we're all in that same boat. We're all sociable animals, aren't we? And I've also learned that I can make one tea bag do two cups of tea. I drink very, very, very weak black tea, so why waste a tea bag when I can make two cups out of one tea bag? I also miss my chiropractor. Oh my goodness. I had a knee operation just before Christmas and I'm doing really well, back on the bike, cycling, doing everything. But it's a bit tight today and I would have loved to have just popped to see her. She's got magic hands so she could just make sure I'm on the right track. And these are the things, isn't it, that we just take for granted, the things that we do every single day without even thinking about it. Little actions, popping to the shop, popping to have a coffee, um, ordering something online, um, popping out and chatting with the gardeners, planning a new, planning, you know, we just miss these things and we sometimes take them for granted. And I think what I'm saying right now is, you know, at these times, it's the gratitude that we have for the people that help and support us and the freedom that we have in our lives that is oh so important. So I want to share a few things with you that I think are quite important today. The first one is an app. It's an app that I think is absolutely amazing. And um, the reason I want to share it with you is because I think, as I said before, we're living through unprecedented times. 
And I do believe when we come out the other side of this, we will look back in years to come. And what we're going through today will define our history books. It's, it's bigger than any of us could have ever imagined. And we will at some stage want to share it with our friends and our family. We'll look back, sit with our children and our grandchildren, and we will say, do you remember when? And as a family, we've been great as a family at having meals where we sat down and said, do you remember when? Do you remember when we did this? Do you remember when we were here? Do you remember when we had traveled? And it's always been such a big part of our family life, those do you remember when moments. So I think that each and every one of us need to document these times that we're going through right now. And I used to document everything in a journal, but I actually found the journal wasn't always with me, could be a bit cumbersome, and it wasn't always convenient. And so I was introduced nine years ago now to an app called Day One. And it's absolutely amazing. It's a little app that you download onto your phone. And this app allows you to update every single day. So this was a, a, an update I did yesterday where I just put day 10 of lockdown. And it allows you to take a picture and it allows you to put as much uh, writing, as much that you want to put in there to remember that day and the moments and the things that were poignant, relevant, maybe historical, um, that you can then refer back to. And it's absolutely brilliant because on the 23rd of March, I documented the surreal moment when Boris Johnson put the whole of the UK in not just those that were isolating because they may have been around the virus, but the whole of the UK went into lockdown. And it was at 8.30 p.m. and we turned on the, um, the TV to watch the Prime Minister address the nation. And it kind of took me back to when my parents used to talk about their parents turning on those old wirelesses to tune in to Churchill when he was talking about the war times. And we'll look back on this moment, and they aren't war times. It's just we're fighting a, um, a silent enemy. We're fi fighting a, an enemy that we can't see, but we need to document it. And if I look at my timeline and see all of the things that I've documented in the past few days, all of the photos that I've updated, and if I go all the way down, my very, very first ever post was sitting in Rome uh, the day before the success day and uh, having a fantastic uh, event with over 300 people in my team at the success day because we were about to recognize uh, Maria, Lepin Maria Luisa de Pinto for becoming a Sapphire manager. And there's the picture and there's the day that we recognized her. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic with all the other leaders in the room. I think there are about a thousand people in the room on that day. And you know, you can quite easily forget these moments in your life. So I just documented it all and I look back and smile and it was, it was just fantastic. You know, um, documenting time spent with the family, documenting the development of the house, documenting being, uh, just travel, it's just incredible. It really, really is. And so I urge you all to download the app. It's called Day One and it's free. Now, if you want to upgrade to the paid part of the um, paid part of the app, then I think it costs you, I don't know, 20, 30 quid for the year. But this will allow you to download it and put it into a PDF and turn it into a paper journal if that's what you want. But I really do think, yeah, it's called Day One, Ashed, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. I cannot recommend it enough because, you know, we will forget things that are really relevant and poignant. And, you know, when our kids, when our grandchildren are studying this period in their history books, we can live through it with them and tell them, well, we survived it. This is what we did. This is how we had to live our lives. And I think it will be uh, momentous. Now. I want to share a word with you today, and this word is really quite important. And it's a word that came into my mind today when I had a little bit of a challenge. You know, here in the UK at the moment, we are allowed to go and exercise. 
uh, once a day. Now I'm very lucky, I live on a farm, I've got 50 acres of land, I even have a gym at home, so I can go in the gym and I can exercise on any one of the four or five bits of equipment. But I get bored in the gym, and especially when the sun is shining, we've had glorious weather for the last few days, I like to get on my bike and I like to go and cycle. And uh, I certainly can't cycle like my son cycles and like many of you do. But today I've been out for about 40 minutes. I've done about 25 kilometers. I was on the final stretch coming into home. It was a lovely spring morning. The lambs were in the field, the birds were singing, the sun was shining. And just for a moment, everything felt really good. I was going up a really steep hill. And I have to say it was, uh, it was strug I was struggling, but I was going up a really steep hill and suddenly there was a loud bang and my chain flew off my bike. And there I was stranded, six kilometers away from home. And I just thought, well, what the hell? Here I am stranded. And I put my bike up against a gate and I looked out at the countryside and even though I was stranded, I felt incredibly grateful. There I was in the country, miles away from anybody. And as I say, it was very beautiful. But however, I was frustrated. But a word came into my mind that I thought was relevant for all of us today. And that word was endurance. And I got home, don't worry, I got home and I managed to um uh, i managed to get the bike home and i got home and everything was fine i got home without touching anybody being in contact with anybody it was a bit of a hassle but i got home eventually but i thought about this word endurance and i thought you know what does that word endurance actually physically mean you know i've got to endure this inconvenience right now of getting myself and the bike home i've got six kilometers i'm in the middle of nowhere it's in the back lanes I've got no phone signal, what am I going to do? So I had to endure the situation and make a plan because clearly you can't stay stranded. So I did make a plan. But I thought about the word endurance and when I got back, I looked it up to see what the dictionary said, how the dictionary defined the word endurance. And this is what the dictionary said. So endurance, the ability to withstand hardship or adversity especially the ability to sustain a prolonged stressful effort or activity, to continue when all around it seems just too much. And I thought about that in real time, as we are now, and I thought all of us need to learn how to endure. You know, we are in tough times, but we need to learn how to endure because there are gonna be two very distinctive types of people that come through these challenging times. Those people that stand up and fight and say, I will not be beaten. I will do everything in my power to endure, everything in my power to stay strong and to come out the other side and be ready to take life by the horns and run with it. And there will be other people who will just put their heads down and they will become shrinking violets and they will not fight. And they will be filled with fear and filled with challenges and they will struggle. And I'm here to say to each and every one of you, we need to endure. We need to endure this journey together. We need to be strong. We need to be focused. We need to have a strategy and we need to have a plan. And when I look at the word endurance in the way that we live our lives and build our businesses and we are with our families, I think that we need to realize that we need to have a simple strategy in our business. Now, a lot of you know, when I do my trainings, I'm all about strategy. I'm all about having a strategy, a long-term strategy, a short-term strategy, and I'm all about making sure that every single part of the strategy is documented, broken down, actioned, reviewed, planned to the nth degree. Well, just in these troubled times, I'm gonna change my thinking on that. I think right now, we need to be um, flexible. We need to be fluid. Because right now, we don't know what's gonna happen hourly, daily, or even weekly. So we need to be, have, we need to have endurance on a daily, weekly basis. And we need to be able to change in a heartbeat. You know, something that might be working for us today, 
might not work for us in two or three days time or a week's time and we need to be able to recognize it and adapt and, and change the set of our sail and be uh, and endure the times that we're going through so we need to be fluid and we need to be flexible and we need to be able to change quickly and readily so think about our customers we need to be able to stay there for them we need to be constant we need to be connected we need to be engaged with them we need to make sure they're okay we need to ring them up not necessarily to sell them something but just to engage knowing that they may be struggling mentally physically spiritually and sometimes just a kind word and just someone saying hey how are you doing is enough that is enough and then we need to look after those customers and we don't need to be scared to ask them do they need anything again i was speaking to a lady earlier on and she said to me i i, I made a, a challenge to her that she engaged with all of her customers that maybe haven't ordered for a while and she did and what she did is in doing that is one lady said thank you so much for connecting with me contacting me reaching out to me please can i order six bottles of aloe vera gel you see this is about us enduring these tough times so we can be there for our consumers so make sure you know how you're going to interact with your consumers. Don't wait for them to connect you. You need to wrap your arms around them and connect with them, sharing with them the very best products that we have in the world. Then we need to endure with our prospecting. This is something that we need to keep up at all times. Now we live in troubled times at the moment, so our prospecting has to change. We have to come from contribution, we have to come from the heart. We have to be sensitive to people's needs. We have to be understanding of people's needs. When we're prospecting right now, we have to understand that for some people, they genuinely need to hear from us. They genuinely need our, our opportunity and our business, but right now they're overwhelmed with the situation. And even though we know they need forever, they may just not be ready to hear it. So with our prospects who we know who are struggling, going through tough times, and not really knowing how they're even going to come through this situation, we just need to be there to chat with them, to maybe share some ideas with them. We don't need to be on the phone being heavily presenting forever. We just need to be building the relationship, building the trust, building the belief, just letting them know that we're there and we care. Then there are people right now for whom they need this opportunity. They genuinely need it, they're open, they're ready to listen. But again, we need to tread carefully. This is about maybe having a couple of conversations, maybe finding out what's troubling them, maybe finding out what their challenges are, listening to their challenges, and then meeting their challenges with solutions. And going forward, I'm gonna be more than happy to share with you some of the words I use right now that are making a difference and i'll do that in another live uh in another live video maybe in the next three or four days maybe the next week but the most important thing that we need to do with our prospects is stay connected and stay engaged we need to be building the uh our contact list we need to be talking to people having those conversations it's all about timing and whilst the timing may not be right today or next week or next month or even this year, I can promise you that forever living is the option, is the vehicle, both from a product point of view and an opportunity point of view to safeguard people in the future for the very awful thought that if anything like this ever happens again. But we need to take it one step at a time and we need to be truly sensitive in the way that we prospect people. Check up on people, check in with people, stay engaged with people, laugh with them, joke with them, empathize with them, be there for them. Because when you build that relationship, there will, will come a time when they say, you know what, I'm ready. And when they're ready, you'll be ready to take them on a journey which will completely change their lives. Now finally, in closing, I will just need to say one other thing. You need to endure in your own personal strength. It is so easy to become bombarded with the news and the views of so many people who are um, talking about the coronavirus and the situation we have around the world at the moment. And sometimes it can really attack our mental state. 
So you need to be personally strong. You need to be personally strong for yourself. You need to be personally strong for your family. You need to be personally strong for your friends, but more importantly right now as well, if you have a team in forever, you need to be the strength in that team. Your team needs a hero. They need you. They need you to step up. None of us are going to be perfect in these uncharted waters, but as long as we step up and show up, as long as we can be strong and do the best that we can possibly do, then our teams know they're in safe hands. But if you go silent and become a hermit, close your doors, batten down the hatches and you don't talk to anybody, then you let so many people down. You know, today I've been on global calls all around the world. I've been on the calls to South Africa. I've been on the calls to um, Zimbabwe. I've been on calls to Hungary. I've been on calls to uh, Italy, into Spain. Uh, I had a great call with Kim Madsen today. I've been in, on a call into Germany. And Kim Madsen summed it up beautifully. You know, Kim used to be a sailor and he said to me, he said, you know what, Jane? He said, I'm a sailor and this will not be plain sailing. And I will not be down under the deck when my ship is sailing. I will be on the helm right at the front sailing that ship. And I just thought, you know what, that's an awesome attitude. And that's why Kim is a diamond manager and one of the top FBOs in the world. That's why I am where I am, because I will never leave a sinking ship. And what I'm saying to each and every one of you is stay strong, guys. Because I said it last time, together we are capable of so much. And that's why I'm bringing this community together. So I want to thank you for all your amazing messages. We did get back to most of you. I spent a lot of time interacting with you, chatting with you. I was blown away with the amount of countries that connected with us. And I'm loving all your emojis now. Thank you so much for that. But I also want to encourage you to do something for me. You will have questions, all of you, in these times. And remember, your question could be relevant to many, many, many people. So don't be scared to pop your questions into the chat box. I will be collating the questions and answering them. And your question could be impactful on many, many people around the world. So pop your questions in the chat box. When you're watching this, let me know whether you're watching live. Let me know whether you're watching in a replay. Let me know where you're watching this from. And uh, let's stick together because teamwork, together, everybody achieves more. And we're all here for each other. So wherever you're calling in from around the world, watching from around the world, have a great evening. Stay safe. Follow all the rules. Look after each other. Give each other those virtual hugs. Let's stay strong together and let's endure together. Thank you for turning up tonight, guys. See you all again in two or three days' time.